really glad to be here. We consider it's our privilege to be associated with uh, railways, the largest ever, what should I say, 14 MX. And I am really impressed by Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Arun Jarwani, who in his renewal, in his lecture, when he delivered it, he said the ideal things. And as a man from occupational health, I felt really extremely glad that he told us that he knows little of occupational health. He told us that he really knows little of occupational health. But I found he had touched the core and the core of the occupational health needed for Indian railways. He said about local pilot who stays at camp. Uh, I came to I came to know this particular technical terms when I come this evening, the cab and the pilot. I know I, I knew it as local driver. And what he described about the cab that is to be described as in our terms it is work in parliament. When we say that occupational health is is, is considering the work. So worker must be in a work environment. And during our chemistry days, I mean, during our school days, we used to use a one idea, you know, sign, irreversible. So worker here, reversible sign is here, and work environment is here. So this continuous interaction is going between this worker and worker environment, working environment. And occupational disease, is a very simple thing that it precipitates from this reversible reaction. So if you draw this worker reversible sign and work environment, then the precipitation is occupational disease. But I need to say that occupational disease arises out of work environment only. So it was really uh, very enlightening to have Dr. Rai to say, all, all these things. I'd like to say in industry, myself, my profession is Deputy Chief Inspector of Factories Medical in uh, Government of West Bengal. I'm working here for the last 24 years. I have seen almost almost all the types of factories in the railway workshops. So what is in the, in the Indian railways? He said that 14 lakh workers are here. Now, a single factory having, having, a, having a big number of workers is steel factory. Say, Bukapu steel plant, which is having 2,000 workers at present. Now, today it is uh, 2013, 2013. So, if you consider the other earlier days, say in 1980s, how many workers were there in DSP? Do you have, have any guess? 32,000. But during that period, they used to produce 1,000 metric ton of cerebral steel each day. Today, with this 4,000 people, they are producing 8,000 metric ton of cerebral steel. Now, mathematics is, is, is not correct, you know. How can it be possible? 30,000 people making 1,000 and uh, 12,000 people making 8,000 metric ton. This it is a global phenomenon. Ours previously the industry was labor intensive capital. Now for the last 15, 20 years, what we have gathered that it has changed into capital intensive labor. Thereby it means that all the workers in line is very precious to us. So what is our objective of occupational? Our objective is it's also very simple. It's a simple sentence actually. Objective is unhindered optimum production without the threat of occupational diseases. It's a very simple. This is the objective. And what Dr. Kumi has emphasized, what Sudeep was, was talking about, it is that that this our our occupational health will only prove this thing. 
occupational health practice will only only not only save the water it is economically far far more beneficial why do the indian railways now thinking about the cap actually they are thinking about the work environment i have got a peculiar experience something 10 12 years before when i was approached approached in my office some young men some five young men came to me five six young men came to me they introduced them as local drivers for metro railways how they came to me some of them were my student i used to take classes in universities uh, regarding occupational health and safety and they said to me that sir we are having some we are at least some 30 40 people working for the last 10 years in the metro rail driving we are, we are having various types of signs and uh, various types of symptoms so we have made with our doctors but this is not not going at all so i suggested to my colleagues that let us go to dr shida uh, uh, so that he can put some light on it i took it unofficially so i took history occupational history for each of the 40 people very detailed in, in in every details of it and i examined it and the sign and the symptoms they are telling me is it's it's not in the pathology that is this cannot happen so i don't into the team what could be the cause of it so i got two particular points regarding all such elements number one is noise most definitely and number two struck to me while i was thinking and reading and all these things the speed by which metro rail turns and these people standing on the cab in the cab very straight and looking so what they are seeing they are seeing the changing scenarios each and every time frame is changing and it is taking much more than the time given to the retina that is less time retina has got a time to register the frame it is crossing them so in my opinion these two things are the main are, should be the main culprit and they agreed to me that sound is therapeutic uh, dr pillay was talking has talked about nih noise induced hearing loss i tell you this is american theories but it accepted by everybody acgih you know noise they are telling and we are also telling noise is the greatest pollution of art and what what is happening in ih noise induced hearing loss as a deputy chief inspector of factories medical i have seen thousands of cases of nih in different factories but i tell you this is not the final thing noise affect us in only two ways number one auditory ways and number two non auditory effects this auditory effects means nih which is to take some time both time to uh, to, uh, to to manage us but we are not afraid of it as an occupational health physician we are not afraid of it we can easily stop it by putting the arm up and in the bone but what about the non auditory effects the non auditory effects are such important that's why it is called noise uh, in the greatest pollution on earth it is affecting your central nervous system the highest systems in your brain that's why the hyper irritability these psychosomatic disorders the uh, and mental disorders also it just take an example think of our boys our children what they are doing since they first class eight jokna mara bangla ebong patna ebong bajate shuru korlo what they will be doing short tension er moddhe chokish hoto shuru ঠিক আছে বাড়িতে টিভি চালাবে কি চালাবে হোয়াটএভার দিই হাই বলে ইন দা কার স্টিরিও ইন দা কার স্টিরিও কে ইন দা হাই বলে দিস ইজ देयर পার্ট হোয়াট অ্যাজ প্যারেন্টস হোয়াট উই আর গেটিং হাই পারেন্টিলিটি ইজি কাটিং দিস আর অল 
the produce of the non-military effects of my money. Think of yourself. And I will not, uh, I mean, talk in details, but one thing I like to say you, the basic of occupational environment is MSDS, we call it MSDS. MSDS is material safety data sheet. Whenever we go to uh, go for a visit to the factory, we first ask for the list of materials or the list of chemicals you have. And we immediately ask for MSDS, material safety data sheet. Material safety data sheet will give you all and every details of that material. Whether that is hazardous, whether that is dangerous, how it is affecting your this system, that system, how can you prevent all these things. So basically, all factories use chemicals. So there's a, a nice common correlation with MSDS. I put it in that way that uh, he has shown about the Prabhupada has shown about Madam Suri. I tell you one thing, and I must tell it in my vernacular language. During my, when my child was about three, four years old, Ratre, I am going to go to the ball 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 to the ball